You're listening to Sean Kelly Reviews, a presentation of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. Now here is your host, Sean Kelly. Welcome to this uh, live edition of uh, the Sean Kelly Reviews podcast. I am uh, streaming this recording on uh, YouTube, so this is going to be a very uh, interesting experience. And uh, so I am going to uh, review uh, three films. First up will be... um, Night School, which uh, opened last weekend. The film is about um, Teddy Walker, played by um, Kevin Hart, who is a high school dropout who tries very hard to hide this fact from his fiancée, Lisa, uh, played by uh, Megalyn Echekunwoke, I can't pronounce those names, out of the uh, fear that she is out of his league. So um, uh, Teddy suddenly finds himself out of work, and he is offered a position by his friend Marvin, played by Ben Schwartz, on the condition that he go back to school and earn his GED. So he uh, goes to uh, night school, as the title of the film says, and he's in class with a bunch of other misfits, and he has to um, contend with his unorthodox teacher, Carrie, played by uh, Tiffany Haddish, and his uh, bully-turned-principal, Stuart, played by um, Taryn Killiam. So, Night School is the uh, latest comedy from director Malcolm D. Lee, who had a big hit last year of the film Girls Trip. So, um, Night School stars Kevin Hart as Teddy Walker, a high school dropout who still manages to get himself a successful career as a barbecue salesman. However, when the store explodes in a freak accident, Teddy finds himself out of work and afraid that his new fiance Lisa will find out about his status as a dropout. As such, he decides to enroll in night school to get his GED, thinking that it would be a pushover. However, Teddy's teacher carries accepting no shortcuts as she uses her unorthodox methods, such as MMA, to help Teddy overcome his learning difficulties. So, um, I would say that the Kevin Hart comedy has almost become a genre into itself, and you are either going to enjoy his antics or groan at him. Uh, Night School is a typical lowbrow comedy that has the occasional humorous moment, but it is more likely to elicit groans (laughs) than laughs. Uh, from the gross out humor in a restaurant to the quote unquote black speak by Stuart, there's quite a bit in night school that just left me shaking my head. It is um, kind of sad that um, Malcolm D. Lee um, saw a stock rise of the huge success of Girls Trip last year, only to follow up with a mediocre Kevin Hart comedy. I'm sure that night school will be. Uh, earning some sort of profit. Kevin Hart does have an audience for his films, however, I just have to say that um, his style of comedy has never really been my tea, and that school is a film that I've already forgotten, and it's a 3 out of 5 star film for me, so. And that's it for my review of Night School, and we'll move on to my next film, which will be uh, Mandy which is um, a film that has been playing in limited release in um, Toronto for the last couple of weeks, and it has actually been um, playing to some really de- decent crowds at the one cinema it has been placed in. So I um, saw uh, Mandy at like a 10 p.m. screening, and it was a uh, very good atmosphere, that's the least. So, uh, the film is about uh, Red Miller, who played by Nicolas Cage, who is a logger who lives with his artist girlfriend, uh, the titular Mandy Bloom, played by Andrea Riseborough, in a cabin near the Shadow Mountains in the year 1983. Uh, one day, uh, Mandy catches the attention of a cult known as the Children of the New Dawn, led by uh, Jeremiah Sand, played by Linus Roche 
who instructs his fellow code members to kidnap Mandy with the help of a demonic biker gang known as the Black Skulls. Left for dead during the assault, Red sets out to hunt down those who wronged him. So, uh, writer-director um, Panos Cosmatos, who uh, previously directed um, Beyond the Black Rainbow, descends into hell on Earth with Mandy. Uh, the film introduces us to Red Miller and Mandy Bloom as a loving couple living in the middle of nowhere. However, their idealistic existence is torn about with the arrival of the Children of the New Dawn, a cult of religious fanatics fueled by LSD. When Jeremiah Sand fails at his attempts to seduce Mandy into their fold, uh, he takes it out on both her and Red, leaving the latter tied up and bloody. When he finally frees himself, Red arms himself with the help of his old friend, Caruvers, who's played by Bill Duke, and he sets out on a bloody mission of revenge. I'm going to really say straight out that um, Mandy is probably one of the most evil-feeling films I have seen, and that the plot is the thing that nightmares are made of, literally. <laughs> a lot of this comes from Mandy's uh, visual aesthetic, which features a lot of red tinted lighting, which becomes more prominent as the film progresses. In fact, I'm going to go so far and say that Mandy is quite technically a very accomplished film, and there's even a great scene in the film where Jeremiah Sand is trying to seduce Mandy, and their faces fade back and forth to the point they seem like one person. Probably one of the main selling points of Mandy is the promise of crazy Nicolas Cage, which has almost become a stereotype at this point. One very notable element of Cage's performance is the the entire second half of the film has him spelled in very little dialogue. As such, this is a performance that relies greatly on Nicolas Cage's crazed facial expressions. Uh, Red Miller's quest for revenge is indeed a bloody one, with him even constructing a battle axe like something you would see on the cover of a Heavy Metal album. And uh, speaking of uh, Heavy Metal, there are a number of animated dream sequences within Mandy, which is uh, highly uh, reminiscent of that 1981 film. Now, ultimately, I would have to say that Mandy is a film that is hard for me to fully recommend because of the dark and evil feeling that the film, and it was a film that would give me nightmares for sure. Uh, actually, I don't think I actually got any nightmares from the film, but uh, for those coming to see a crazy Nicolas Cage performance and or a Goblin Mac and Cheese commercial, which was a fun little A-side in the film, are not going to leave the disappointed. Uh, altogether, I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. So my uh, third uh, film that I'm going to review is uh, Bad Reputation, which is about the uh, career uh, of Joan Jett. So um, as you may know, um, Joan Jett uh, started as a teenager, co-founding the all-female punk group the Runaways, which experienced great success in the mid-70s, before imploding due to creative differences. Joan Jett would then team up with uh, songwriter and record producer Kenny Laguna as she kick-started her solo career that generated hits such as Bad Reputation, I Love Rock and Roll, and I Hate Myself for Loving You. So, uh, Bad Reputation is directed by um, Kevin Kerslake, and it provides a document of Joan Jett's career spanning four decades from the uh, formation of the Runaways in the mid-70s to um, Joan Jett's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2015. Uh, since the uh, beginning, Joan Jett had to um, struggle with um, bias and prejudice about women in the music industry. With the runways, the uh, focus was primarily on blonde bombshell front woman Sherry Curry, which eventually caused the band to implode. This resulted in Joan Jett having a hard time getting her solo career off the ground, uh, with um, she and Kenny Laguna ending up forming their own label to distribute her debut record. Now, I have to say that without a doubt, Joan Jett is one of the most influential female rock performers of all time, and Bad Reputation does a good job at covering all the bases of her career. 
along with the central interviews with Joan Jett, Kenny Laguna, Sherry Curry, and the rotating lineup of Jett's backing band. The Blackhearts, Bad Reputation, also features interviews with the likes of Iggy Pop, Billy Joe Armstrong, Debbie Harry, Kathleen Hanna, and Miley Cyrus, who all talk about how influential Joan Jett's music is. There are even a couple interviews with uh, Michael J. Fox, who acted with Joan Jett in Paul Schrader's 1987 film Light of Day, and uh, Kristen Stewart, who played Joan Jett in the 2010 biopic The Runaways. At the core of uh, Joan Jett's longevity is the odd couple relationship she shares with Kenny Laguna, who has stuck with her throughout many highs and lows of her career. It is amazing that someone who started performing professionally when she was a teenager is um, still going strong uh, four decades later, so altogether I would say that Better Reputation is a pretty good job at showing how important Joan Jett was and still is to women in rock and roll, and I uh, give it a four out of five stars. And it's a film that's currently playing at the um, Hot Dogs Ted Rogers Cinema here in Toronto. It will have like two additional screenings and next week. You can check hotdogcinema.ca for all the details of that. And uh, that's it for um, this experimental edition of uh, Sean Kelly Reviews. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will see you soon. And if this turns out good, I might do the live podcast regularly. So see you soon. Sean Kelly Reviews is a production of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. The music is Out of the Fog from the website podsummit.com. You can support Sean Kelly by going to patreon.com slash skonmovies. You can read Sean Kelly's writing at www.skonmovies.com. 